which no man could number. We already know we're more numerous than the sand and the sea. That's what it says, the stars in the sky. Of all nations. Why I say of all nations? Because we became nations ourselves. Twelve nations that created, well, that that's, uh, consists of one nation, the twelve tribes of Israel. We're twelve nations that became one nation, and we got to come of all nations because the Most High told us in Deuteronomy 28 and 15, in the wilderness, as he gave us the laws, he told us, but it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto, listen unto the voice of the Most High thy power, to observe to do all his commandments with, and his statute which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee, right? So we didn't follow it, so I go to Daniel's, Hold that, get Daniels 9 and 11. Daniels 9 and 11. Yeah, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, where we at, the servant of the Most High, because we have sinned against him. Okay? So, he told us in Deuteronomy 28 and 15, But it shall come to pass, if thou would not hearken unto the voice of the Most High, thy power, we just read that we didn't, to observe to do all his commandments and his statute which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now, since it says we got to come out of all nations, why well, we got to come out of all nations? Come out of all nations. As the Israelites. Deuteronomy 28 and 64. Deuteronomy 28 and 64. And the most I shall scatter thee among all people. From the one end of the earth even unto the other. See what he's saying? He's going to scatter us among all these nations. From one end of the earth even to the other. And there we be scattered among all these people. These nations. Thou shalt serve other gods. Religions. Which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. That's why I say show me your religion in this Bible. Do an hour breakdown. Showing your religion that we follow in this Bible. Which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. That's what we tell them. Wood is Christianity. The stone is like Islam and and Buddha and whatever else you can think of. Can you give us a religion, show? So you you see, and even when you look at Acts the second chapter, in our holy convocation of. Pentecost or in gathering or Feast of Weeks Acts is the second chapter the Master Oshad told us I will not leave you comfortless I will come to you he came to us in Acts the second chapter as the spirit of the most high which he is as the prophets had of old the spirit of Amashiach which is the spirit of the most high since he is the word of the Most High, you don't get words, you get words from a voice. The Most High say, listen to my voice. The voice, from a voice come words, he's the word of the Most High. Ain't nothing new under the sun. Acts the second chapter, this is the day of Pentecost, verse 5. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Right? So this is a holy convocation of the Israelites. We were devout men out of every nation under heaven. That's why we got to come out of all these nations. Where were we scattered in? Right here. Verse 9. I tell you. Parthians and Medes and Elamites and dwellers of Mesopotamia. These are Israelites. And Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia. By Phrygia and by Philia in Egypt and in parts of Libya, about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews, apostolites, priests, and Arabians. We do hear them speaking our own tongues and languages, the wonderful works of the Most High. That was a miracle that was done. So, 
Let you know, see, we came, he's still going to scatter us among all these nations. Look at uh, 1 Peter 1 and 1. 1 Peter 1 and 1. Peter, an apostle of Mashiach, that was shy to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus. Strangers that are Israelites. Someone you don't know? Look at the lands, same lands that we just named, that we came for the, the Feast of Pentecost in Acts the second chapter. Peter, an apostle of Mashiach, that was shy to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Elect. Elect. That's a key word here. But you know, it's not talking about any other nation but the Israelites. Elect according to the foreknowledge of the Most High, the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and speaking of the blood of Amashiach Yahushua, who was shed for the twelve tribes of Israel, Acts 5 30 and 31. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. So it says, Elect, who did he elect? That came from all those different lands. We just read about them coming from the the land, the lands in Acts the second chapter, the ninth verse down. So who are they? the Israelites? Who are the elect? Look at uh, Isaiah forty-five and four. Isaiah 45 and 4 defines the elect. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect. Get no clearer than that. See, for Jacob, his servant's sake, and Israel, the most high's elect. Okay? So now, 1 Peter. Peter, so when you go to Peter, how can it be talking to anyone but the Israelites? If you're a Gentile, it's not talking to you. First Peter 1 and 2. Elect according to the foreknowledge of the Most High, the Father, who says he's the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Exodus 3, 14 and 15, Matthew 22, 32, Acts 3, 13. Look. Let me go to the Acts, the one in Acts, Acts 3. And 13. Acts 3.13. The power of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob. The power of our fathers. See? That's what the both sides name is. Forever, the memorial to all generations, the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Jacob being the forefather of the twelve tribes of Israel. Look what it says. First Peter 1, and this is how you get to understand who it's talking to. First Peter 1 and 2. Elect, we just proved that elect are the Israelites. According to the foreknowledge of the Most High, the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of a Mashiach that was shy, Acts 5 30 and 31, shows you whose blood was shed for. Acts 5 and 30. And 31. The power of our fathers. We know the power of our fathers. We just read in Acts 3.13. was the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The power of our fathers. The power of our fathers. Jacob being the forefather of the twelve tribes of Israel. Raised up a Mashiach Kelvashai whom he slew and hanged on the tree. Hanged on the tree. Hanged on the tree. Hanged on the tree. Don't say hanged on the cross. Say hanged on the tree. We get Israelites, gave him over to the Romans. The Romans hung him on the tree. So-called Italian Caucasians. 
him who is the Mashiach Yavashai hath the most high exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance through sprinkling of his blood to Israel. To Israel. And forgiveness of sins. There it is. So, there it is. Now, 1 Peter 1 and 2 again. He let, we know the Israelites, according to the foreknowledge of the Most High, the Father. When you look at Psalms 147, 19 and 20. Foreknowledge of the Most High. How we know the Most High? Because this is what he did. Psalms 147, 19 and 20. Psalm 147, 19. He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel, four tribes of Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation. That's why he said the four dollars are the both sides, because he ain't dealt with no other nation but the Israelites. As for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the most high. Okay? That's the four dollars of the most high. We got the spring of the blood of Amashiach that was shy and asked. 5, 30, and 31, blood was shed for the 12 tribes of Israel, grace unto you, and peace be multiplied. So who the grace is given to? And the mercy. If you like to talk about grace, be to you, so who is the grace given to? Um, for the wisdom of Solomon and the Apocrypha, Go to Wisdom Solomon 4.15. This the people saw and understood it not, neither laid they up in their minds that his grace and mercy is with his saints, and that he hath respect unto his chosen. So his grace and mercy is to his saints. So who are the saints? Psalms 148.14. Psalms 148.14. His grace and mercy is to his saints. I know everybody wants to sing that song. Oh, when the saints are marching in. But the saints are these people. Psalms 148.14. He also exalted the horn, which is the power of his people. Hallelujah. The praise of all his saints. Even of the children of Israel. That's the saints. The children of Israel. For well, we are people near unto him. Praise you the most high. So that's the saints right there. And he had respect unto his chosen. Exodus 2 25. Who the most high respect unto? His chosen is said. Let's read Exodus 2 25 first. Exodus 2 25. Who the most high respect to? Exodus 2 and 25, the last verse of Exodus, the second chapter. The Most High looked upon the children of Israel, and the Most High had respect unto them. So we're saying he had respect unto his chosen, right? So who are the chosen? Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. This is how you get understanding through the precepts. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. For thou art in holy people unto the Most High thy power. The Most High thy power have chosen thee, the Israelites, to be a special people unto himself. How special? Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. See? Now, Deuteronomy, you go to the first beginning of, of these chapters, it'll tell you who's talking to. Deuteronomy 1 and 1. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. Not to no other nation, but to all Israel on this side of Jordan, okay, in the wilderness. So, Deuteronomy 14 and 2. He had respect unto his chosen. Deuteronomy 14 and 2. Without it and holy people unto the Most High thy power, Israelites. And the Most High have chosen thee to be a peculiar people. 
Nobody's like us unto himself. Above all the nations that are upon the earth. You see? Most I have chosen the Israelites. So, here it is right there. So, his grace and mercy is to his saints. And he has respect unto his chosen. We see now he say he has respect unto the children of Israel. And we see that the chosen people are the Israelites. So, that's who the grace and mercy is to. Too, because we the only ones he gave the law to. Psalms 110 and verse 4. Psalms 110 and 4. It's a brand new Bible, so bear with me. I'm trying to break it in. Psalm 110 and 4. The most I have sworn, it's the most I swear, the most I have sworn, the most I have sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek, Mashiach, I was shot. Most High at thy right hand, my second side on the right hand of the Most High, shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. See that? He gonna strike through kings in the day of his wrath. He shall judge among the heathen. He shall fill the places with the dead bodies. He shall wound the heads over many countries. He shall drink of the brook in the way. Therefore shall he lift up the head. And know that he is the power. As he give it to a Mashiach of a Shai, a Mashiach of a Shai ruling for a thousand years, then he's going to have, have to be subject to the Most High. The Most High going to be all in all forever and ever and ever. I love y'all. Praise you, the Most High. I will praise the Most High with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. The works of the Most High are great, sought out of all them that have pleasure therein. Works and that's why I say supposed to be teaching our children these works of the Most High. His work is honorable and glorious, and his righteousness endureth forever. He hath made his wonderful works to be remembered. Can't say it enough. Can't praise him enough. The Most High is gracious and full of compassion. He hath given meat unto them that fear him. He will ever be mindful of his covenant. Covenant with who? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Y'all talking about the covenant with everybody. No. Covenant with who? Psalm 105 and verse 8. He have remembered his covenant forever. This is the covenant for. This agreement, a contract from the Most High. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations. Which covenant or contract or agreement he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac and confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law. And to Israel for an everlasting covenant. Hallelujah. So, looking at this, I got one more I want to bring for. After First Peter's one and one, we got to go to James one and one, because a lot of y'all like to go to the books of Peter and James and so forth. But understand this from this day on, James one and one. You a Gentile, you a heathen, or you an Israelite that's a Gentile, ain't talking to you. Even though you're Israelite, you still think you're a Gentile, it's not talking to you. This is what it says. James 1 and 1. James, a servant of the Most High, and of the Most of our Master, of Mashiach Yavashai, who's addressed to? To the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad greetings. What do you say, my brethren? Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. See? Brethren, his brethren. Who's his brother? Twelve tribes of Israel. But it's addressed to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings. Point blank. So. And it lets you know 
and uh, Revelation 7 and 9, after this I beheld and lower great multitude, that's the Israelites, which no man could number, we more numerous than the sand of the sea and the stars of the sky, of all nations, coming out of all nations, because we scattered among all nations, that's why he just said to the twelve tribes of Israel, which are scattered abroad, greeting, brethren, his people, twelve tribes of Israel. Of all nations, coming out of all nations, we scattered among all nations, and kindreds, and people, and tongues, and languages, and we spoke all these different languages, That's, that was a miracle that happened in Acts the second chapter, when you read it, it will tell you that they spoke in the different languages of the Israelites that came from all these different lands that I gave you from Acts the second chapter, the ninth verse. Stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. And cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our power, which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne, and about the elders, and the four beasts, four, the, the elders, you got twenty-four elders, each one for the day, one, twelve for the day, twelve for the night, and the four beasts, which are the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the archangels, Michael, Michael Uriel, Gabriel, and Raphael, and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped the Most High, saying, hey, I'm going to say that. They're not going to say that. They're going to say, Hallelujah. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our power forever and ever. Hallelujah. You know, they, put that, they, they put that amen in there for Ammon Ra. Understand this, overstand this. Do your research. So that's the exaltation. Most I get the increase, most I get the exaltation. So, I'm going to stop right there. We can continue with this another time. If you'd like further information, you can reach me, Preach Style Wom, at P.O. Box 20012, Long Beach, California, 90801 3012. That's P.O. Box 20012, Long Beach, California, 90801 3012. I hope that was edifying. Remember, the most high gives the increase, the most high gives the exaltation, so you got to humble yourself. Before the Most High visit you and humble you with a broken and contrite spirit, it's the end of the world. We're in the last days. It's time for us to really get it together and get prepared for the kingdom that's prepared for us. It's already prepared. Just a matter of us getting ourselves together. And with that, I'm out. Shalom.